everybody. My name is Brian Kelly, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. We have a very special show for you today. I am in High Park right now, and we are in a packing company where canisters of olives, I don't know if you call it canisters, drums of olives come in, and they eventually become something called a rain barrel. So our guest today is Suzanne Gebeline, and she is the owner of the Great American Rain Barrel Company. Is that correct? That's correct. Hi. And these are your rain barrels, Hi, eh? Hi, Brian. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Suzanne, I was over at um, Cunningham Hall in Milton um, about a week ago, and there was a representative there from your company, Nancy. Yep. Nancy, what's Nancy's last name? Nancy Corkery. She's, yeah. she's a nice lady. Yeah, she and, is. And Nancy showed me your rain barrel. Now, I had bought a rain barrel in the past, and it wasn't as nice as your rain barrel. Well, thank you. And so... I just thought it was, I found out that Milton is offering these rain barrels at a steeply discounted price to Milton residents. And they, matter of fact, I think they have to order them by May 15th, is that correct? May 16th. May yep. 16th? That's right. And is that a, what state is May That's 16th? That's a Monday. That's a Monday, by okay. 5 p.m. So if you're watching the show before May 16th, make sure you, um, where can they get that form in order to order these rain they barrels? They can get the form down at the town hall or they can go to our website at greatamericanrainbarrel.com. And on the left sidebar, you'll see community programs. And if you go onto the community programs, you'll find the Milton ordering location. Excellent. Well, folks, you need, you know, um, I don't know about you, but most of us are on the uh, MWRA. And my water bill was quite high last summer after I started a new garden. So uh, we need to save some money and we need to help the environment. That's right. And you're recycling, right? So We're recycling. We are actually a food importing company. As you can see, we have tons of barrels around us. We bring predominantly Mediterranean specialty food items. These barrels bring olives from Spain. Um, they sit outside in the sun and cure in, in, uh, in, in the barrels. The olives cure in the barrels and then they come over, they're shipped over here. We bring them into our plant, we empty them, we pack the contents, we distribute that across the country and then we take the byproduct, which is the drum, and we retrofit it for water collection right here at our plant. I think you should put these in the landfill. <laughs> we try to avoid doing that as much as possible, Brian. <laughs> and that was probably the way, they, that's probably where they went years ago. Pro I don't in the early really days. know what they've done with it. I imagine that it does probably have a history of being chipped up. A lot of fishermen, there have been a lot of um, secondary uses for them. Mm. They do have a rebate program, so you can ship them back, but that tends to have its other environmental implications as well. So it's nice to be able to reuse it, repurpose it and uh, use it for something great like collecting rainwater and harvesting your own rainwater to use in your garden. Right, well tell us about, okay then, so how did, how did the story start? How did you get started at the, the, in a rain, I mean you're, you're a packing company, yeah. you're in the olive business primarily. Sometimes, how did you get in the rain barrel business? Sometimes, Brian, you get really lucky and we got really <laughs> lucky. Okay, when, tell the folks at home what happened. When we first bought this business back in 1989, we had two school teachers who came to us because they had, um, modeled this design after rain barrels that they had seen in England. And they came to us and said, we want to use their, your barrel. And at that time, we were in East Boston. They were local. To, they were in Dedham and, and Needham. And they would drive into East Boston, pick up a couple of barrels at a time, drive them out. And so they would then retrofit them at their home. And then they'd drive them down to the auto body shop, have them painted. And then they'd drive them over to UPS and have them shipped. And after a couple of years of doing that, they came to us and they said, uh, you want to buy the business and we thought you know why not it makes sense for us they've been a nice customer to us it's been a nice venue for us to distribute the barrels or the, the used barrels and so we thought let's think about it so we did it and I think it was the deal was finally sealed it took about two years of us negotiating and them doing some and us doing some and by, I think by 94 we were the full owners of the Great American Rain Barrel Company and it's actually been a great business since well, you know, the timing is right. Timing I mean, is right. people are concerned about the environment. People are concerned about water bills. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you're watching this in another state, we say water bills over here <laughs> <laughs> in Massachusetts. But, um, but I, I love the design. So tell the people about the design and, and what makes your water barrel, uh, water collection system unique. Um, well, first of all, um, it is a fully recycled pro product. That is, that is one of the unique elements. Um, the other thing is, is that the barrel has a screw top lid, so you screw the, you can remove the lid, and oh. it has a screen, and that is really why is it? Why is there a screen? Well, that we added as, as insurance, just to make sure that insects can't get inside and breathe. 
It, the smalls on the top, the um, holes on the top of the lid are fairly oh, wait, small. Wait, folks can't see that. Let's show them the holes. Oh, okay. The holes in the lid are fairly small, but insects can still get in that. In so there. there's holes, folks. Can you, can you see me, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> so you drill some holes, and this is how the water gets collected. Right, the water through drains there. through these holes into the barrel. Okay. And the screen just protects them from, from any mosquitoes getting in. So then the barrel fills, and you have here two ports down here. You have a hole down here and a hole here. Okay. And that's where you're going to put your spigot. It comes with the spigot instructions and two elbows. And so you um, you want to attach your spigot, which now, is do, fairly easy. Now, do the easy. people in Milton have to attach their own or? Yeah, yeah. Everybody, not just the Milton folks, everybody has to attach their own I don't own know. Spigot. I don't know if the people in Milton are going to be able to attach a spigot. It's, no. not, it's not very <laughs> difficult, you know. Okay. I think even the folks in Milton If I can, can do it. it then Brian, anyone why don't can you do try it. and do it? Let's uh, oh, see if you can oh do there's it. a test. Oh, no. okay. oh there's even a, so you're a gonna gasket. Take, you're going to take this. It has one gasket on the outside. And here's, one on the inside. And, one, and here's your nut. So you're going to put it down in that hole. <laughs> okay. So you, right you, here. Uh, okay. We've left that one open for All you. All right. And then we reach in here. We put that on there. Okay. And then here. And then you, and and you, then put then the, you just tighten it on. Tighten it up there. With this. What a country, huh? And there you go. Suzanne, you did a great spigot. job. So we like the spigot here. And, and why do you like the spigot there? Because you can fit your watering can underneath it. And then okay. when the barrel, when the water falls below that line, you just tip the barrel forward and it goes into the watering can. And then when it gets really empty, you can just lift the barrel and fill your watering can. <laughs> it's really not that hard. But you could also take the lid off and dip your watering and you can, can, couldn't dip you? it, yes. Oh, now, man. some people want to put their spigot down here. Um, and that's great, but it is gravity fed, so you're not going to get a lot of pressure to push the water out. The hose might be 25 feet long, so it's not going to it's not going to move out there and then go into a watering can or lift up into something. It can trickle out, so it will work with a soaker hose if you want to bury the soaker hose. But if you want to use it with a, a any kind of garden hose, you really need to raise the barrel, and you need to raise it significantly. The easy method is to put it on a, a couple of cinder blocks, okay. and then you can use that with a hose or with a watering can, because it'll be high enough for the watering can to get under it. Okay. Or if you really want to raise it, then you can start to see some spraying action. But we don't always encourage a lot of spraying action, because you don't want this water. You've conserved this water. This is water that you've harvested. So you want to use This is a smartly. precious commodity. These are, this is precious commodity. Okay. And having said that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how much water you can collect. Uh, Suzanne, how much water can you collect? You can collect a lot of water with one barrel. One barrel holds 60 gallons. Now, okay. 60 gallons yes. will fill in a tenth of an inch of rain on 1,000 square foot roof surface. So if your catchment uh, area, the roof surface, is 1,000 square feet, this barrel will fill in a tenth of an inch of rain. That's not a lot of rain. Right. And so you're, you can get a lot of water pretty quickly. Now, if you're using that water, in, the, in, the, in New England, we get about 16 inches from May through September. That's the average rainfall. Okay. So if you're getting 16 inches for that and one period, tenth of 60 gallons? You can, that's about, if you're using this water and moving it out and recycling it, I mean, using the water and refilling the barrel, you can save about 1,700 gallons during those summer months. 1,700 gallons. That works out to be, uh, well, it's hard to know what area you live in, but if you're paying for your water to come in and then paying for the sewer to go out, that this could pay for itself in a season or two. Thanks. That's a nice return. Now, what if somebody wants more than one rain barrel? They can do that. And we provide for them two elbows in their in little kit that they get inside the barrel. Okay. And they can attach this. Is this, this is, difficult or is this an easy one like the last thing? No, th th this is even harder. <laughs> this is harder. This okay. you just screw in to the side of the barrel. Okay. And that's your overflow valve. Overflow valve, okay. That screws in. Yeah. And so when the barrel fills, it's going to spill out the side here. Okay. You can attach a hose and direct it down the hill, away from your foundation, or back into your ground system. Now, if you want to link two barrels together, okay. you would take your second barrel, you would remove the plug that comes in here. Okay. Really There's a hard. plug over here, Mike. That really she's... hard to do. Can you see that, Mike? Okay, so she's removing the plug. And then you're going to attach 
the other elbow in there. Okay, elbow to elbow. Elbow to elbow. And this takes, you have to center it properly so it's not working Well, you don't have smooth. to do it right now. But okay. you can, so you're gonna cut and then, and then you then attach you have a, a little, a little uh, flex tube, like a three quarter inch inner diameter flex tube. And so when this barrel fills, then this barrel will It will automatically fill. come up and, and fill. Yeah, nice. you leave the first one plugged and then the second one open. And then the second side, you have the overflow going back into your Wait glass Wait a minute, you keep, what did you say? The first barrel yes. remains plugged. Okay. So the water pushes out into the second barrel that has the overflow connection here. Yes. And then you have your actual overflow valve here. For, so when this barrel fills, you can push that back into your ground system or direct it into your neighbor's yard. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's the largest number of chains you've seen of these? The largest I know of are 16. 16? Yep. Wow. Um, there are some people out there. If that we buy 16, do we get a discount? You absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are some people who use these for some pretty sophisticated purposes. Um, there are some uh, rose um, uh, gardeners who have an indoor facility, and they have them inside. And then the um, benefit of that is when the barrels are indoors, receiving um, warmth through the um, sun through the windows, they warm, the water warms up and it actually heats the greenhouse as well. Wow. Yeah. And is it, is it better for plants to actually to use like a watering can with water that's more at an air temperature versus the cold water that might come out of the tap? Probably. Uh, yeah, Less I shocking to yeah, some plants, I, would I don't know. That's probably, I think that's probably pretty good. They don't like it too cold or too hot. Mm -hmm. I think they like it, they like water and, they, and so if it's, if it's the, the, the right te temperature. The right yeah. temperature. That'll be nice for them. What they really like is the organic water that's collected in these barrels that's not chlorinated, you know, that doesn't come through your water system, you know, through your pipes that doesn't have any kind of... Any treatment any, to any it. Any treatment to it, any, any uh, minerals, um, and uh, any chlorine. So they like that a lot. And there's a lot of organic matter on your roof that goes into the barrel, which is why you cannot drink this water. Organic um, matter. What, what, what kind of organic matter might well, be on someone's a, roof? Well, there are a lot of birds that live up there and a lot of squirrels that live up there. Do you know, you was know, that my bird feeder, know was it my bird feeder this morning? Yeah. A fox. And it was attacking either a bird or a squirrel or something, and it took off with it in its mouth. I don't know I what it, it got. I hope it didn't leave it on your roof. No, and it didn't make it to the that. roof. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some organic matter in our yard. Yeah. And your plants like that. Well, you know, we did a show on yeah, uh, stormwater collection right in Milton last year. Yep. And they have some new ones on the streets now to yep. uh, protect the Neponset River. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, all and of this is good. It's just less going good. into the sewer system and yeah. things like that. So. Yep. There's a big move on, men, uh, the, on the part of many communities to encourage residents to use rain barrels to prevent stormwater runoff. Now, this one is in green. This oh, and wait. We'll show a picture. Uh, so you can see some of the finished product, but you also recommend you have an idea of putting some stones on top of it, right? I do, yes. Is um, that your idea? I'll send you some pictures that you can show at the end. But um, I, yes, I do. I like the stones. I use polished river stones, and I put them on. They come in a couple of different colors, depending on what barrel you have. And I like it. It gives it sort of a filtering effect, and I, I feel like it um, aerates the water or purifies the water as it goes in. So I like that. Um, occasionally when you keep them on, you have to take them off every once in a while, rinse them off because a lot of pollen collects. Slimy. Well, pollen collects or whatever. Mm. Stuff will collect in there. So it sometimes, you know, doesn't look as good. But it gives it a nice ethereal effect, kind of. Now, when the folks it. order it through the program you have with the town of Milton, um, what are they going to get? They're going to get the barrel. They're going to get the screening. They're going to get the lid. And they're going to get the spigot. And they're going to get that. Do they get the rocks? And they don't get the rocks. Can but they order the rocks if they, they want? They can order the rocks, and okay. I can tell them where to buy them directly. Okay. Um, the other thing that we sell, um, it, this is called the Save the Rain Diverter. And the way we use the Save the Rain Diverter is that the downspout comes down the side of your house. And I'll show pictures. I'll give you pictures. I don't have any attachments here. But the, the traditional way of collecting the water is you cut your downspout off above the top of the barrel. And at the bottom of your downspout, you have some sort of elbow piece, mm -hmm. or if not, you have to purchase a little elbow piece. Right. And you can affix that to the bottom of the downspout where you've cut it off here, and it'll shoot the water on top of the barrel, and the barrel will then collect the water. Well, that is great, but what happens is when you're not collecting water, 
or if you move your barrel away, you're left with this downspout shooting off the side of your house. Oh, that looks lovely. <laughs> and it's not, it's, it can also damage the foundation of your home, too. So it's not necessarily right, more a water wise. could seep into your foundation right. because it's not it's being not, diverted. Not, not necessarily a wise thing to do. So we have this Save the Rain Diverter. Another item that some other genius, a guy named Mike Hartman, in California designed in the 80s, We've been selling this with our barrel since the early 90s. Does this come with the barrel? It's additional. It's additional. Okay. But we recommend it. You know, it, uh, Absolutely, it, sure. It, um, we want to do the job right. Yeah. We sell a lot of these to other people who are just wanting to dump water into their watering can or into oh, another, gotcha. to another collection system. So the downspout comes down the side of your house. And in this case, you cut off a chunk of your downspout and you put that in. And then you can open, collect, Close your downspouts working like normal. See all you folks that were afraid, didn't know how to do it. Now there's a solution. There's a solution. But That's now right. here's another question. I Don't talk, make it too tough. I talked to a person about the rain barrels, and the comment was, "I'm not going to get out there and cut my gutter downspout. I don't know how to do that." So is there someone that um, you recommend that does that sort of thing for these people? If they wanted to have them installed, is there oh, on your website you have some? I don't have anyone that, I mean, uh, I can recommend people because there are too many, we sell to too, too many different a locations. A lot of landscapers do it. Landscapers them. will do it, a handyman, any carpenter. It's very simple. I have cut many a downspout myself. I don't mm. consider myself very handy around the house. Mm. So if I can do it, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Gotcha. Um, I use a chain in my house instead of downspout. So if you have a chain coming down and I just use a spike in the gutter yeah. and it goes through a galvanized chain and that yeah. holds the chain. And it looks and pretty too. Then you can wrap the chain. That's why I'm mad. I got, a, I, got, I got a rain barrel. It's not half as good as this. I got a change upgrade. And then you can wrap the chain around here and it would sit yeah. nice. Yeah. Very nice. Excellent. It, this is a fascinating idea. And um, you, folks, when you see some of the pictures, we're going to take some pictures. I'm going to show you, but there are a lot. How many barrels come through your business a year of this type? Let me say a lot. <laughs> in the thousands? In thousands and thousands. Thousands yes. of barrels. So you understand you are really helping the environment by, by yeah. purchasing one of these. And, um, and you're saving yourself some money and you're doing a, you're doing a good thing. Yeah. So now you can get them in green. What other colors? They come in three. We they come unpainted, which would so be this is this how color. they come in from this the. This is uh, what they look like when they come in, and because they're sort of scuffed up, they've been they've been um, container storing, ships. And they've been storing bear, uh, olives. They've been on container ships. They've been dragged around, so they don't look so pretty. They look a little used and tired. So we paint them, and we have three colors. This is what we call forest green. We have Nantucket gray. Oh, this is the Forest Gump model. I mean, <laughs> Forest Green, sorry. Okay, what else you have? Then we have this called the Nantucket gray. Oh, over here. yeah, okay. Um, I can lift that up. They're very light. They only weigh 20 pounds. So that's the Forest, uh, that's the Nantucket gray. And okay. then we have Earth Brown. Earth Brown. And that is right here. And this Walt, is point, point, point the camera right on Walt over there. Walt, say hello to the people at home. Walt, you've been uh, retrofitting rain barrels for all 15 years now, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. Nice. And you paint them up and everything, huh? Yeah, I paint them and I drill them and get them ready to. Oh, so can you hear Can you hear Walt at all? Okay. And um, you have a paint shop over here now, right? Yeah, that's the Mike, paint. can we move over here so we can see the paint shop? Is that okay? I'll stand close to him. You can hear him. Come on, Walt. Come on, Suzanne. I'm coming. Oh, I gotta bring my little, I got to bring my little puppy here with me. <laughs> You ready? Yep. So Wally, this is the paint room, eh? So this is the paint room. So this is how we do it here. So we have some pictures are hanging out on this string here. So then we're spinning, spinning around. Then we go just... Oh, just, I got you. Just okay. Just the spray gun, we just, just hold it. So the barrels are painting itself. So. Nice the and balanced. Nice. Themselves. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, folks, the reason I wanted you to see this is because I bought a rain barrel and they said, Listen, just go down to Curry Hardware and you get a can of this plastic paint. And I did it. Now, my house is white, so I wanted my rain barrel white. And I think the undercolor, the original color was blue of this barrel. And it just did not come out very nice. So, so this is a much better paint job and a much better way to have it done. Now, if somebody wanted a custom color and they were willing to pay for it, is that available? It's not available because the... Um the uh, recipe for the, the recipe for the paints 
is a very complicated recipe, and you have to buy it in very large quantities. It has a hardener in it. It's not something that's easy to do. This isn't the this isn't the local spray can. No, it's not a spray ah. can. And that's and that and the beauty of it is you get this nice finish, and it has a hardener on it, so it adheres to the plastic and is quite durable. Yeah, because mine's not quite durable. Yeah, and it gets a modeling effect when you spray it on too. And the reason you want to do that is because in the winter. We, you don't want to keep water in this in the winter because yeah. it would crack the... So I had to empty my rain barrel and I put it behind my garage upside down. But So you're moving and it's getting scraped up a little bit. So you want a, a hardened paint. A nice finish. Otherwise, it's going to look like hell. Yeah. I mean, I know you wouldn't mind if they look like hell. You could buy new ones every couple of years, but <laughs> that kind of defeats the whole reason we're doing well, this, right? Well, the beauty of these barrels is they last virtually forever. I mean, you know, they are... It's plastic. It's pretty indestructible. So... You know, we don't want you buying a new one every couple of years. We want you to stick with the one you got. <laughs> <laughs> we want you happy. Well, Wally, I appreciate you showing us this. Okay. You've been painting. Yeah. How many barrels do you think you've painted in your lifetime? Quite a few? Uh, I have no idea. I've made a lot of barrels. <laughs> you've made a lot of barrels. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you're making a lot of people happy. Oh, yeah, the, the exhaust. Yeah, the exhaust system. Filters. Going into the environment. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Yeah. And that's another reason why you shouldn't be doing this home. You could do it at home in your driveway, and the paint could just blow in the wind and get all over your new car. <laughs> yeah. I think it's better to pay for it here. Well, just to have it done yeah. Now, Suzanne, in this, what are we looking at here in this room? Well, actually, this room is all filled with product. So in here you see olives from several different countries, the different color barrels. What countries do they come from? Um, this particular blue can right here, I believe that's from Argentina. The grays are predominantly from Spain. The black are from France. We have Italy. The red are from Greece. Um, we have peppers from Greece. So we have a lot of uh, different countries rep represented in here. And each barrel is a slightly different style depending on which country and who the um, producer of the product is. Um, the barrel that we use for the rain barrel is predominantly this barrel right here. Uh, we call that our signature barrel, and that brings olives from Spain. And when the barrels are filled, they have these tags on it. It says slice green with pimento. Um, they're filled. They weigh about 500 pounds. Wow. So that's a... That's so a, obviously, that if we fill them with water, they're going to weigh close five, to 500 pounds. They're going to weigh 500 pounds. pounds. Yeah. That's what they weigh when they're filled with water. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Well, let's take a look down on some of the other parts of the building. So Suzanne, over here looks like, what, what do you have here? These are barrels that are all ready to go out. Um, here we have, these are community programs when they're stacked on pallets. So they'll go into a truck and be shipped to communities around the country. Um, here we have them in boxes. And the reason they're in boxes is because they're shipped via FedEx to residents, individual residents. And that's through our internet, internet catalog companies that sell our rain barrel online. Um, it's tricky, only the very large internet catalog companies can sell our barrels because they get a huge discount with FedEx. We can no longer sell directly to individuals because the shipping has become so expensive. What happened FedEx. with the shipping you were telling me earlier? Well, in the 90s, we used to ship via FedEx and it cost about $8 to ship one of these around the country. And now that, has, that price has exploded. Uh, I think it was about 2004. They changed their um, uh, measuring from a physical measurement to dimensional weight, or I mean, from weight to, dimen to dimensional Dimen dimensions, to right. dimensions. And so that took our barrel from, um, at the time in 2004, I think it was like $24, took it up to about $100 a barrel. Also, so. so folks, we're fortunate, we live close to the Great American Rain Barrel Company, so in essence, you're getting a complete rain barrel for less than someone would have to pay just for shipping. Yeah. Our uh, community programs that we do, because um, we work, we are approved vendors for the state, we've negotiated a price for the different communities in Massachusetts, we sell them to you at next to wholesale prices. And so you're getting these barrels at a very deep discount. Nice. So folks, make sure you uh, go to the website, and um, I'll put the, uh, your website address That's on it, and fill out Thank the you. form if you want to get involved in the Milton Community Program. If you're not in Milton and you're watching from uh, some other city or town in the country, make sure you visit the Great American uh, Rain Barrel Company website and um, 
you'll be able to place your own order and they could contact you about maybe start setting up their own community yeah. program where they yeah. can save on the shipping and everything. Yeah, that's great. So this is a great thing that you're doing for the for the environment, for the earth. And, uh, well, we think so. So we hey, think well, so. good for you. And, uh, it's been fascinating. So, I, and we get, got to see a little bit of the all of packing and yeah. things like that. So, yeah. sorry I couldn't take you in there. It's just we're restricted from going in there. I understand. No, not a problem. I'm just glad I'm not a big olive fan because you know I'd be wanting to stick my fingers in there. But <laughs> <laughs> my wife's the olive fan, not me. We'll have to send you home with some olives and well, a barrel if you want. And a barrel. Listen, folks. So, uh, get your order in and uh, help save the earth. Save yourself some money. Have some fun. And. Uh, Get yourself a rain barrel and, and happy gardening to you. Thank Suzanne Gemmeline, thank you so much. Nice and to we meet appreciate you, Brian. you taking the time being with us today. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for being on Talk of the Town.